Hey everyone, it's Mr. Sedell, and I want to talk about grading in our math learning lab. Now, oftentimes grading can be frustrating for students and parents uh, because sometimes it's confusing or it's like, how did I get this grade? And oftentimes that's due to lack of clarity and uh, not knowing where to go. So that's a big part on me is to let you know what we're trying to achieve, how we get there, and letting you know where you are on that journey. Now. Uh, a big part of our learning, like I have said earlier, is going to really be anchored with our four math habits, and that's problem solving, making sense of problems, sorry, in that order, making sense of problems, problem solving, communicating, and reflecting. And essentially that is awesome, but we need a roadmap, and I need to tell you where those stages are. So throughout our learning in classroom and together, I'm going to identify where those are explicitly. Where are those parts of, of solving a math problem? Uh, where are we finding evidence of those habits? Now, when I say a roadmap, sometimes you need to know and uh, we need to be on the same page. We need to have common language and that can be supported by the use of a rubric. Uh, again, where are you? Or the whole point of a rubric is to tell you where you are on your learning journey and where you need to go. So I'm gonna give you two examples. One is kind of an informal one. When we're in the class and we're doing uh, lots of work on these whiteboards that we have all around our classroom. And I'm gonna, you'll see these stoplights. And there's a red stoplight, there's a yellow, or there's a yellow light and a green light. Now, uh, essentially, like I said, our four habits are, the first habit is making sense of a problem. So the red light, essentially, you'd be telling me, hey, Mr. Sell, I'm having trouble making sense of this problem. The yellow light would be, you've already made sense of the problem, you're in the problem solving part of this problem, and you might be stuck somewhere, okay? And then the green light there is a way for you to communicate with me like, I've made sense of the problem, I've done prob I'm done problem solving, and now I'm ready to communicate how I did that. So that's kind of an informal way for us to have math conversations in the moment. Now, oftentimes, how does this connect to grading? Like, that, this is a great model for when we're together. All right, having a, again, a, just a conversation back and forth. When we're taking maybe a more formal assessment or a quiz or whatever we're gonna do for assessments, the rubric needs to be clear, okay? And I'm going to share with you my music analogy, my musician analogy, because the, I'm a musician and I cannot just pick up an instrument and learn it right away. It's taken many attempts, many tries, uh, many performances and so let's talk about a performance if I'm preparing for a performance a live performance I need to practice a lot I need to get proficient with the song I need to know the song I need to practice it a lot of times it's gonna be some mistakes I gotta try things over and it's not that I just play it one time and I'm all of a sudden a master at that song I've got to play it multiple times so let's check out our rubric together and I'm gonna use my idea of uh, a, a musician to help with that so if we start at the bottom our rubric's gonna be on a scale of 10 through five. I'm not even gonna talk about zero through four because this does not correlate with our grading system in terms of like an A, a B, a C, a D, and an F in an area, like around here, okay? So um, what I wanna talk about in terms of a musician, you can think of five as with a math problem, like a musician, it's just there, there's the instrument and they're staring at it. They don't even pick it up. They don't even try to play the song. Uh, for a, a six, You've attempted a math problem. You've tried something. Like as a musician, you've picked up the, pro the instrument. And maybe, like I play guitar, like maybe I'll try a note or here, then it just doesn't sound that good. But I tried, okay? Seven uh, is kind of like beginning basic. This is a good area to be. I'm starting to understand. There's some evidence as a math student that I understand. I might need some assistance to get better at this math problem. Same thing with an instrument. Like, uh, I, can, I can play a few notes. I can maybe play a few chords. I can maybe hold a little bit of a rhythm, but I need somebody to help kind of assist me. Uh, whether I, get, I listen to the song over and over and I try and play along with the song, or I have a music teacher, something like that. So I'm in the beginning stages. That's a good place to be. If uh, in math class I'm proficient, that means, wow, I've got a lot of evidence that says I understand this, I've problem solved it, and I'm communicating well, I might have made a couple mistakes. As a musician, that means maybe I can play the song like from start to finish, and I made some mistakes along the way. And I'm really close. I'm getting a lot better. But I still have to go back and maybe practice a lot of parts over and over. If I am at the stage nine, in terms of a math class, I have solved the problem successfully. 
I can communicate it well, I have lots of evidence, and I really don't need much assistance or any assistance at all. I've mastered the problem. As a musician, I've nailed the song from start to finish. And that, you could think of it as the first time I nailed the song. I was good to go. As a musician though, if I'm good, people want me to play that song again. They want to, hey, can you come play this show over here? Can you go come play at this party or this birthday party? So I need to show repeated mastery. And that's what we do in the math class. I can't just solve a problem one time. I need to solve a similar problem and show that I've mastered this repeatedly. So like I said, I've nailed it again as a musician. I can play that song over and over. I don't need to look at music sheets. I don't need to sit down and practice it. I can do it and perform that song readily. So I hope that kind of explains. We're gonna, I'm gonna give you some math examples. We're gonna um, identify what a seven looks like, what an eight looks like, what a nine looks like, and what a 10 looks like, and so forth. And so this is not going to be unclear, okay? Uh, so I'll give you some examples. Rest assured, I wanna provide clarity. If it's clear to you and it's clear to all of us, it'll be a great conversation piece to have a rubric to tell us where we are and where we need to go in our learning journey. So thanks for checking out this video about grading in our math learning lab. And I look forward to sharing those examples with you over time. Take care.